Hey Beth, we're just waiting for Patsy to join us. So we all should be good here in just a few moments, just waiting for her to get connected. I'm a little early. I had, have a tendency to be early, if you can hear me. I'm not sure I have my sound on, let's see. Hey, Beth, are you there? Looks like you're getting your sound hooked in. Try to get all my pieces together here, and we'll be ready to go in just a few moments. Test on my mic. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, perfect. We're in good shape. Got an air conditioner going right by my head, so I guess I'll turn that off. There we go. That should make everything better. Got just a few moments while we wait for Patsy to get in here. We've got about five minutes. Beth, I'm not sure if you can hear me or not, but I see that you're here and I welcome you to our meeting this evening. I'm just waiting a few more minutes for Patsy to get on and we will begin our conversation this evening. I hope everyone is going doing well. Um, I think most of you know that I'm here in, um, at the present time. I'm here in Langhar, Pennsylvania. Uh, daughter here is, um, I think she's 39 weeks this month, or this week, sorry, not this month. This week, she's 39 weeks. And so waiting for her to have that baby. Um, I came up a couple of weeks ago because she had been getting some bad reports from the doctors and they were kind of indicating they were going to do um, induce early. And so that was very upsetting for her. And she, of course, has uh, Paisley, who is going to be three here, or excuse me, she's going to be four here in November. So she needed someone to come and stay with Paisley should that happen emergency wise. So um, I'm kind of um, out of my element. Not I've spent a lot of time here, so I feel real comfortable here with my daughter, but I don't have all my video equipment, so we're doing this on the road. And um, the baby wasn't supposed to be born until like the 11th or uh, 12th, somewhere in there, of September. So I thought we would have most of this all underway before I came up just to our visit to visit the baby. Looks like we might have Miss Patsy in here. Looks like she's getting ready to join. Hey, Patsy, we have, uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Looks like you're muted. Is it muted on your end? There we go. There we go. We have Beth with us this evening. So oh, awesome. um, I don't know if you can see her. Yeah, I see her name, name there. Yeah. So yeah. Awesome. So awesome. So we're all together here. And did you have a problem getting in or everything worked good? No, I, I had a different uh, passcode okay. at the bottom. And so then I went back up mm -hmm. to the top and saw real life. So I was... yeah, um, yeah, I'm not quite sure. Um, I think the real life is the um, always plat the always a, a password that I put mm -hmm. in for this 
So that link that I sent you and that password real life will work for every Tuesday night talk. The real life, okay. It's always gonna be the same link. So oh, great, fantastic. I made it the same link on purpose, so then that way we weren't mm -hmm. like, ah, so I can yeah. label it Tuesday night, you know, Tuesday talk, so. Good. I think we're getting in here on time. I don't know how close we are. Mm -hmm. Couple minutes, so how'd your day go? Uh, you know you're recording, is that okay? Uh, it's it's recording to the cloud, so yeah, oh, okay. it's, it's it's okay. Um, I do want to do want to tell you that I thought our um, our risks part one didn't didn't record, but I found it today. I've had some some serious computer issues today. Oh. I've tried three. I've had to change back and forth between two computers all day. Something works on this Good. one for a little while, and then I switch to another one, and then it goes out. Oh, another one now I can't connect to the internet, so it's really hmm. so, frustrating. It it yeah, with everything we got going on in our personal lives. Yeah. Sorry, Beth, you get to hear the, the behind the scenes and this is what <laughs> happens when you start a new course and you start going after the enemy's camp. Uh, you've indicated several times that, you know, you've been working in deliverance industry for a while, so you understand what happens. I mean, we're mm -hmm. always aware. Yeah. It doesn't make it any more comfortable, but right. uh, Patsy's got things going on in her personal life and my mm -hmm. husband called yesterday said he went to AFib, into AFib and I'm up here. So that was kind of, but he, mm -hmm. uh, praise Jesus, he went, he um, went back into regular heartbeats by hey, the end of the day. He self-regulated. Yeah. So yeah, it's just, it is what it it's is. It's just crazy. Yeah. It's just crazy. It's one thing after another. And then all yep. these computer things and, you know, I mean, I don't believe everything that happens to us is the devil, but yeah. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. Real interesting that it all happens at once. And uh -huh. especially when we're, we're starting a new course. So I'm going to go ahead and pray and we'll get started. And I think we're just going to do Tuesday talk and then give it um, a little pause so we can cut that off if we need to um, to use for the other things like we talked about. So I'll um, I'll pray and then we'll start okay. and then um, I'll start and I'll do the pause and then you can say and I'm Patsy Shreve. Okay. 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 So you know where to go. So it could be a little heads up. <laughs> All right. Father, we thank you for tonight, God. Yes, and we sir. ask that you would just lead, guide, and direct us as we speak mm -hmm. tonight, Lord God, yes, that Lord. your spirit would flow through the words and that yes, we would make yes, the Lord. connections that you mm -hmm. want to make, the Holy Spirit that yes, you want to make, that your words that flow from our lips, maybe not mm -hmm. what we have planned, but what you have planned. Yes, In Lord. Jesus' yes, name, Lord. amen. Amen. All right, we'll give it a second here and a pause, and I'm going to hit, um, yeah, it's recording to the cloud. I think it's just, just automatically going to do a recording, so okay. I'll just wait a second. Hey, it's Cynthia, and it is Tuesday Talk, 8 o'clock Central Time, every Tuesday night. We meet together and share on Tuesday Talk. So we just wanted to um, drop in and uh, talk to you a little bit about, about we're doing, what we're doing. Go ahead, Patsy, and give them a little rundown of what we're going to be doing tonight. Well, tonight we're going to be talking about uh, repentance. We're going to be... Um, talking about what you know the def definition of repentance we're going to be talking about forgiveness we're going to be talking about how to renounce how to break agreement with certain things in your life that have uh, bogged you down or have a control over your life we're going to be talking about how to resist the devil too yeah. so we have some areas that we just want to cover um, with you and to help you get free to help you just um, recognize that um, you can have this freedom, that this freedom is available to you, but how do you go about it? Sometimes you ask, what do I do? How do I do that? And what does that <laughs> really mean? And yeah. so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Patsy. And so uh, our Tuesday night talks are just really very um, uh, casual mm -hmm. in the aspect that um, we're just here on Tuesday nights to do some teaching, um, to answer some questions, whatever questions we've had sent to us this week. I do want to apologize. I had some emails today that um, one or more of our Freedom School attendees was not receiving the email. So she had not gotten mm -hmm. anything. So I got that corrected. So everybody oh. that's in the class probably got about four, four emails because I have to start up at the top again to make them mm -hmm. to go. So I sent those all out and I think we're in business as far as everybody getting back in and I made sure that everybody had the proper tags that they needed to get, which is just the mechanics behind mm -hmm. what we do. So Patsy, while I'm getting us shared to the, all the different pages, why don't you talk to them about what we do and why we do it and, and why this process, why we use this process? 
Well, I think it's because we've seen so many people tormented. There's so many people that are just being beat up by the enemy and they don't know what to do and they just allow him even to kick them while they're down. Yeah. And so we, our heart just bleeds for some of these people that are just struggling and having such a difficult time getting free. And yeah. maybe, you know, you're somebody that is interested in helping these people like we were, you know, we had an interest in this. And I think with, with me personally, it wasn't until I actually experienced firsthand and had an eye-opening experience, the, the reality of the spiritual realm, right. that finally I went, wait a minute, something's got to be do done about this. And I really felt led to get more educated on what to do. How do you help somebody? What do you do? What are the steps? What, how, you know, what do you do, Lord? How do you, how do you help people get free? And I think All that's right. our heart is just to give people um, just some teachings and some yeah. understanding of their authority in the Lord, mm -hmm. how they can um, use the gifts and the tools that God has given you to be able to help someone else who might be struggling or to help okay. yourself too. I mean, yeah. when we struggle personally, we need sometimes just to be even reminded. I know myself, I just need to be reminded of the tools I already have available to me. Exactly. This is a lifelong process. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think, um, well, it looks like I got lights going out behind me. Um, whatever. <laughs> Sorry about it. I'm getting very distracted. For those of you who don't know, I'm in uh, Langhorne, Pennsylvania at my daughter's home. She's about ready to have a baby. She's at 39 weeks. So I'm anxiously mm -hmm. waiting. Um, but she has an old farmhouse and I'm in the upstairs. I get the upstairs, but the lighting and, you know, thing isn't always so great in a farmhouse. So if you, you see the darkness behind me, that's what's going on. I'm not in my home studio, but I'm glad to be here for the baby. So, and to be here for my other granddaughter. Well, um, new baby girl is born. So anyway, yeah, I want to tag on to that, Patsy. And so it's interesting that your, your, your heart is always that people get healed. Yeah, you mm -hmm. want them to be free. And you've mm -hmm. seen over time how healing and for healing and deliverance work together, freedom and, and, Absolutely, and, all, that, yeah. and um, yep. all that works together. But um, your first call is to heal broken hearts. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what, you know, what you mm -hmm. think of. And my call is to set captives free, but mm -hmm. our stories are so much mm -hmm. more interest, diff different because when you saw something in the area of deliverance, mm -hmm. you were like interested. <laughs> wow. I wonder what that what is. is. That? What's going on? <laughs> I grew up with horrible nightmares, just horrible, mm -hmm. horrible nightmares, a lot of fear and anxiety and shame. And, you know, the gamut of the list that we, we minister to people with mm -hmm. about because I know what's happened in my life, but what's so cool about that is I remember being in a, in a church, like a cell group meeting, I was going through some leadership training and there was a section in which they were talking about, you know, demonic uh, presence and all that kind of stuff. And I just, I stopped the whole class mm -hmm. and I spoke to my pastor at the time I was living in Michigan. And I said, look, I'm just telling you, don't count on me for any of that stuff. Cause the mm -hmm. first time that happens, I am out of <laughs> <laughs> and, it, you know, it's so funny because out of all the people in that group, nobody does any of the kind of stuff that I do. And I think, you know, when we're born, we, the enemy sees the plans of God or somehow, I'm not quite sure, I assume it's uh, something through um, familiar spirits and all that sort of thing. But he can see our giftings probably, well, not probably, absolutely much more than we can. He knows our, our favor with God and he knows where, what God will like to use us. And so, he attacks us in the area that we're going to be used. And, you know, we hear over and over again that our mess is going to be our message. And um, so my approach is always that um, about people getting free and they can't be free unless they're healed, unless their mindsets are correct, unless they've dealt with all their stuff. Right. And so their identity is right. But I come at it as, as the freedom aspect. And then you, of course, come at it at the hope of the, um, healing, but you also know, and, and, and we work together well that way is because your focus is for healing, but you know that they got to have the deliverance and the mindset and all of that to work together in order to be free. So what we love so much about, and what we're here to, tonight is to talk about the um, four or five step that we use every time we minister to someone. Um, and it's a little bit different. And we wanted to make sure that we, we, um, give a biblical basis for what we do. And so we thought it would be a good idea tonight to just talk about, you know, like, oh, repentance. I know what repentance is. But, you know, there's a lot of people that we minister to that don't really have a good understanding of what repentance is. Um, 
And so we're going to go through those things tonight. Probably a few stories will come up. And um, if we see some, some um, uh, questions come in, I see I'm streaming to YouTube. I haven't been able to find it on Facebook. But if it doesn't stream to Facebook, I'll make sure it gets there. Um, trying to use some different software so things don't always work the way you want them to when you're out traveling. I don't have my tech team with me. He stayed at home. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, I just wanted to, to start tonight. And this is very appropriate for those um, that are watching um, this evening, uh, interacting with us through this, this, um, through the, this call, um, and those that will be watching it um, in, in the replay, and those that are in our Freedom School. Um, these are all appropriate, uh, and it really anybody who wonders about what we do and why we do it, this is all appropriate for all of those venues, right? We, we don't do everything, but we do do, we, we pr pretty much stay in a circle of things. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, there's some things that Patsy does that I don't do, and there's some things that I do that Patsy doesn't do, but we pretty much stay in our little circle of, of uh, what we do and what God has anointed us to do. And we've seen some really cool things, haven't we, Patsy? I yes, just, you know, I'm just amazing. totally amazed. You know, my mm -hmm. husband, uh, Dean, he was not as familiar with what we did until um, it, I had to have him sit in with me a couple of times because we had couples and that sort of thing. And he was like, <laughs> <laughs> and now he tells the same story over and over again. <laughs> and the tools that we used in that counseling mm -hmm. session or in that ministry session, he wants to use for everybody. And I say, mm -hmm. he was like, it was so powerful. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I say, well, it does, not every tool works in every situation because mm -hmm. you have to have the same problem. But anyway, I digress. So tonight, let's talk about uh, repentance. And um, Patsy, I don't know if you have any stories about repentance, but I have a really uh, an interesting story because I remember when I got my life straightened out with God, that um, repentance to me became my new favorite thing. I was like how we get about forgiveness now, right? I was looking for places to repent mm -hmm. because every time I repented, it was like a big brick was coming off my back mm -hmm. and I felt so clean. And I felt so loved. Mm -hmm. And people don't think about repentance in that way, I don't think. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. we, don't, we don't think of repentance as, mm -hmm. as a, um, oh, 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 we get to repent now. You know, boy. Let's find some places to repent. <laughs> no, I don't think people really think about it that way. And um, I think it's sad because it can be powerful. Mm -hmm. And, um, I want to talk a little bit about, I'm trying to look for my, my notes here. I just made some notes because I can tell stories all night, but I can't always remember where I want to go. So it's keeping my, keeping myself, um, keeping myself on track here. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, the Bible is filled from the front to the beginning uh, about repentance and repentance doesn't mean, oh, gee, I got caught. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we have some people that come from ministry that want us to fix them. They don't mm -hmm. really want to be sorry. They don't really want to change, mm -hmm. but they want to be fixed. And it doesn't work that way. It doesn't yeah, happen. Not at all. No, not no. At all. And so, you know, I think it's really important that we recognize the value of repentance. And repentance, you know, we say it over and over and over again. And that's why we started recording some of the things that we do, because we just say the same things over and over. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians uh, 7.10 says, godly sorrow repentance produces repentance leading to salvation. I love it when someone says that repentance is when we decide that we're going to agree with God. Yeah, you're right. This is wrong and this is right. Mm -hmm. um, repentance is divine, defined as the doctrine of repentance as taught in the Bible, a call to persons to make a radical turn, the mm -hmm. turn, mm -hmm. from one way of life to another. So when we repent, that doesn't mean we continue on. We should change directions. Every time we repent, we should change direction. Mm -hmm. um, re repentance um, is called for throughout the whole Bible, and it's a summons to a personal and absolute and ultimate unconditional surrender to God. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's really very cool, and I don't think yeah. we recognize that, and I think we sell repentance short right. by not explaining to sick people. We, 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 we uh, talk about salvation, and we say, sorry about my hair, it's bugging me. Mm -hmm. um, we talk about salvation, that it's free. Mm -hmm. But we don't really say um, it's free to receive, but it costs you everything. 
Mm -hmm. We don't talk about the cost. There is a cost and Mm -hmm. we should do a better job, I think, of explaining, look, Mm -hmm. you can be healed. You can be set free, but you're going to have to let go of a few Mm -hmm. things Mm -hmm. and you can hear from God and you can flow in the gifts and you can, you know, do all these great Mm -hmm. and mighty things, but you have to make room for him in your life so that he can flow in. Amen. Did you got anything to add about? Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, that's so important to understand um, the godly sorrow, the God, you know, our hearts, you know, when you are truly sorrowful about what you've done. And I know, you know, you can flippantly just say, yeah, I repent or yeah, I'm sorry. And, you know, but inside you're, nothing's changed. Yeah. And I know at one point in time, I know it was when I was at Brownsville and I went forward for an altar call. I think every altar call, you think you needed to get saved again, but you know, it was quite interesting because uh-huh. I went forward and oh my gosh, it's like my heart just ached inside me. I was so sorrowful and so repentant of my sin and everything that I yeah. offended God or how I could could have hurt God. And I, I just buckets of tears, just yeah. buckets and buckets and buckets. But then the amazing thing to me was after the buckets and buckets of tears, yeah. then it was like this joy boiled up inside me exactly. and just bubbled up and I was laughing and crying at the same time. The ste- tears were still streaming down my face, yeah. but I was so feeling, it was a just an amazing feeling of the clan, being cleansed and, and being reconciled to God and, and, and just it was so much felt so good and so joyful. And I was just laughing and crying at the same time. And people would walk by and they just start laughing too, because it was just, you know, I was just getting more getting and blessed. more and more joy and getting blessed. And, and it was all, all to do with repentance, right? It is. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, and I, I think, you know, we, when you, you were talking about the godly sorrow and I want to mm-hmm. stop on that for some, sometimes is because, um, I think, and this is just a, a shot in the dark here, but I, I really think it's true that we um, have the wrong view of God so many times. And so we attach that to repentance, you know, and I use the illustration. He's this big fly swatter in the you know, sky is going to smack us down. And that comes from our upbringing. It comes from wounds. And so when we think we, we have to repent, if we don't, we're going to you know, hear people, oh, I'm not saying that I'm going to get hit by lightning or I could walk in a church or it could fall, you know, it would fall down and, and all of that. Because we have such a, a twisted view of who God is. Mm-hmm. And we see repentance as, uh, as uh, getting caught in the punishment, you know, like a little mm-hmm. kid, they, they're in the corner and they're being punished. And repentance isn't a punishment. It's a release from bondage, really. Mm-hmm. And so um, I think it's really important that every step along the way, when we're taking someone through ministry, we'll say, well, let's repent for that right now. And they're like, Mm -hmm. they're startled. Well, 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 let's, 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 what what do you mean repent? This isn't a bad (laughs) sin. Well, yeah, you've been agreeing with the enemy in Mm -hmm. in your thought life. Let's, let's repent for it. You believe the lie of the enemy. Mm -hmm. You, you've taken on the sins of your forefathers. You've, you, you've, you, you based your life out of that wound that mm-hmm. all people are this or, 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 you know, whatever that belief is. And you've led your life that way. And right. so you have this skewed view of life. So let's repent because you've made agreement with that lie. And we'll be talking about that a little bit later on. So repentance is something that we do at every step. I mean, every session that we do, every session of ministry has to have repentance in. It isn't something, are you saved? Okay, check. We've got the, we've got the repentance down. Repentance is something that we should do on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. You know, God, show me. You know, search my heart, God. Show mm-hmm. me. Is there anything that I need to repent of? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm always very open about my attitudes and see when I get that going, <laughs> when I get catch me an attitude. And it's true, but I have to be so careful because I can make such so many mm-hmm. snap, snap judgments that I have to be always asking God to show me, is there any place that I've made a judgment or probably judgments at this stage of the game is probably my biggest issue is making a judgment or catching an attitude Mm -hmm. that I have to be careful because I don't, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm holy. I'll just say that. Yeah, I'm holy. I live a holy lifestyle, Um, but I still get caught in attitudes and I get caught Mm -hmm. in judgments. And so that's, those are my areas that I have to really watch. Mm -hmm. 
So Patsy, our next one is forgiveness, which mm -hmm. we do a huge, a lot, no. a lot of ministry and forgiveness. And people say, what two boring subjects. <laughs> so people realize those two things, repentance and forgiveness, how mm -hmm. big they are, yeah. you know, in mm -hmm. what we do. You want to share? Yeah, I know. I, it seems like once that forgiveness is released, we see such a change even in the person's countenance and their in their attitudes and everything yeah. and most of the time it's just helping them understand what forgiveness actually is right they think if they say they're going to forgive somebody then that's saying that it's okay for what yeah. that person did to them they don't have the understanding or that that now you know that they feel that that person needs to be held accountable for what they did. Yeah. And so they're holding or he them wasn't accountable. sorry, right? He, he wasn't, wasn't sorry. sorry. Yeah, he, he didn't say sorry. sorry. They never yeah. asked me. For yeah. Sorry. They yeah. never said they were sorry. I know. Yeah. Yeah. And that has nothing to do with right. forgiveness. And we always, always have said it's for your sake. Yeah. It's not for that other person's sake. Yeah. Yes, they benefit from it if mm -hmm. you release them because then God can deal with them. Yeah. God can take over and start ministering to them and dealing with them. But but we do it to release the bitterness in our hearts and release ourselves from the bondage that the enemy has put on us, the chains that the enemy has put on us through unforgiveness. Exactly. And, you know, um, we hear all the time they don't deserve it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, if you've been sexually abused, if you've mm -hmm. been raped, if you've been mm -hmm. abused in any way, mm -hmm. if you've just been treated, been treated mm -hmm. wrong or crappy, mm -hmm. excuse the words, but it's mm -hmm. really true that people have just been treated badly. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, people have, been, have suffered under spiritual abuse. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever. Um, but forgiveness is so powerful for me and, and um, those who are going to ministry get our whole teaching on forgiveness. And we're not here to do teachings on specifically mm -hmm. each one of these tonight, except for maybe some of those that we don't touch on in other sessions. But forgiveness, when I recognize that forgiveness, I set myself up as judge mm -hmm. when I was unforgiving. Mm -hmm. And that, that made me look as if I thought I was God of the situation. Mm -hmm then I had to say, uh oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't want to be there because I knew, you know, I always talk about this. I know when I look at God, how much I had to be, be saved from, how much, I, how much help I needed that I couldn't deal with that. And then the, the consolation prize, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. there's a consolation prize. I don't know if that's a good word, but is that um, I knew that if I let go of judgment, then they got turned over to God for judgment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the judgment may not be something I would never see, but mm -hmm. I knew in my heart of my heart that God loved me and that he mm -hmm. would take care of me mm -hmm. and that whatever judgment they deserved, he would take care of that. Just like the people that I've hurt, he's taking care of the judgment within me. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't mean they go without judgment. It just means right. that we let go of our part of being the yes. judge and we let That's him good. be the judge. That's so, really good, um, Cynthia. Yeah, it, and that's it, really good because yeah. that, that puts it into perspective for yeah. us so that you realize, okay, God will take care of it Yeah, and he will deal with it. And like you said, you may not see it, but he right. is faithful because he's your defender. Mm -hmm. He's your vindicator. Yeah, He's the one that will, will um, clear your name or whatever it is that's or right. help you um deal with whatever it is that's yeah is he is he our source or is he not mm -hmm. that's you know right. let's let's just get a plane mm -hmm. right are, yeah. are, are we are we gonna live for god i mean are we really wanting or do we want just enough to feel good yeah, you know what true. what is the deal here and and you know you have to make that choice either i'm going to go all out and i mm -hmm. want to be all out for god or i don't mm -hmm. and if you want to be all out for god then you have to let him be god Mm -hmm. And that sounds funny. Let him be God, but you have to choose. All right, mm -hmm. you're going to be God and I'm going to let you take mm -hmm. care of that. And I'm going to worry about me mm -hmm. between you and me. And that's all I'm mm -hmm. going to worry about. It's mm -hmm. so freeing as well. It, it it's really a full time is. job for me to take care <laughs> of me and my attitudes mm -hmm. and not have to worry about everybody else's. Right. Mm -hmm. That's true. So I, I, <laughs> and we are not Holy Spirit. And so we're not the ones. <laughs> I know we try to be. Try, yeah. I've tried to be Holy so, Spirit. It doesn't work. I can no, guarantee you. No, it doesn't work. No. Patsy, you want to start with the next one or you want me to go ahead and ask? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. The next one we're going to talk about is renouncing. Now, this mm -hmm. is one that I don't hear a lot in other ministries. This idea, Now, we're going to start into some things that we do that makes us different than other ministries. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I'm gonna, uh, I, I looked up some, th some um, uh, definitions, you know, because I think it's interesting because we've done this for so long. We know when we, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll whisper to one another, have them, have them, have, you know, we, we need to have them renounce this, you know, or whatever. And we're, okay, yeah, we know, we both know what that means. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we can, we can go with that. But, um, and um, Pets, did you have a, a Bible? I have my, on my phone. Elijah? Nope. You got me? Okay. Got me here? Okay. Yeah. Do you have a Bible? Just... Uh-huh. Okay. Second Corinthians 4, 2. You got an NIV? What do you got? Uh, I can put it in NIV. Oh, okay. You're just looking Second, at it. Cor Second, Second Corinthians, Corinthians 4, 2, right? Okay. So in, if I find it here, actually, I can probably, I can find it here as well. Okay. I do. I'm sorry, Patsy. I got it. Okay. So Second Corinthians um, 4, 2, rather... We have renounced the secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. <laughs> That's a big one. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, we don't twist it to make it fit our way, right? Mm -hmm. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth, we, paint, we plainly commend ourselves to everyone's conscience, conscience in the sight of God. So what, mm -hmm. what, we're, what wow. we're saying is, is when we went, we go through, when we renounce, we'll tell mm -hmm. people, don't close your eyes because we're talking to the devil mm -hmm. right now. We're talking yeah. to the kingdom of darkness. That's we're right. telling you. Yeah. And when you look it up the word uh, renounce in Noah's Webster's, Noah Webster's dictionary, it says to dissolve all bonds. Wow, that's good. Isn't that great? And mm -hmm. I looked at um, uh, some other ones that says to refuse to follow, obey, or recognize any further. We're renouncing you. Mm -hmm. You know, after we've repented, after we've asked for forgiveness, then we'll, we'll go after and we'll uh, say, don't open your eyes. I mean, I mean, open your eyes. Mm -hmm. And we're talking to the enemy here, right? Mm -hmm. Another one says to cast off or reject as a connection or a possession, to mm -hmm. forsake. Um, and, and so that's what we're doing when we're renouncing and uh, you'll go through scripture. A lot of times in the King James, it'll say to deny, to cast mm -hmm. off. And it's really the same word that gets trans gets translated renounce. It's to cast off, to reject, to disclaim, uh, as an obligation or a duty. And that's what happens when we get in a mess with the enemy as we've mm -hmm. taken on his stuff. Mm -hmm. And we're living with it as an obligation mm -hmm. or a duty. And it's all to do with when we start going through freedom school. And when you hear us teach, we talk about footholds that become um, strongholds, that then there's a strong man that comes in and keeps them all safe. And it has a lot to do with what we believe out of our experiences with our wounds and um, the things that we believe. So when, when we're renouncing, we're saying, uh-uh, no. We are, um, but sometimes we'll say break agreement, which we're, we're, we're going to talk about in a few minutes as well. So when we renounce, we're not talking um, to God anymore. We're, we're, we're talking to the enemy and we have done, you know, the scripture says that to do everything that you can do and stand, right? Mm -hmm. Well, to do everything that we can do, we have to repent and get in right standing with God. And we have to forgive because those are the two things mm -hmm. that'll keep us out, right? Mm -hmm. And so then we can say, all right, here I am. I'm in daddy's courtroom. Get away from me. Mm -hmm. I refuse to follow you anymore. I refuse right. to recognize you as an influence in my life. I refuse. I'm dissolving the bonds. Mm -hmm. You know, those people who have been sacrificed to, you know, people that are in severe bondage and maybe they've been in some um, satanic ritual abuse, you know, we'll have, you know, have them write a divorcement right? Mm -hmm. We're divorce. It's a legal document. We renounce and dissolve all bonds. We disown mm -hmm. those. We, mm -hmm. we reject them. The title or the claim. We use that also when we talk about deliverance. If somebody steals my car, they might be able to put some damage on it, but they can't sell it because they don't own it, right? right? We're rejecting the title and the claim that the enemy has on us. Mm -hmm. So we lead people in a, a, a step of renouncing, mm -hmm. breaking, dissolving, um, mm -hmm not refusing to obey, refusing right. to recognize it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I think th that sometimes we get so caught up in the, the, the habit mm -hmm. and our history mm -hmm. that, well, this is what I do. No, yeah. no, we're yeah. cutting bonds. This is a That's new right. life. This is a new day. So we, we um, repent, we forgive, and we renounce. Mm -hmm. Patsy, would That's you right. have, renouncing for me was huge. Right. Yeah. Probably because of my call, mm -hmm. you know, and when mm -hmm. I was finally kind of coming to myself mm -hmm. and getting that boldness right. um, that I didn't have, but oh, right. I got plenty of. <laughs> and that's, I think that's important that 
you, they have an understanding and you have an understanding of that because I was clueless. I mean, yeah, yeah I'd say the words, but I really didn't know what I was doing or what it meant mm -hmm. until they told I me got, to. And yeah, because yeah. they told me to, so I did it and it worked. <laughs> so that's all that mattered. So I really didn't know, but it worked. So that's all that I that, yeah. that mattered. And sometimes that's all that matters, basically, mm -hmm. you know. But if you are ministering or you need a deeper understanding, it's I think it's important to know what you're doing yeah. and why you're doing it because then you it becomes way more important to you when you have that understanding because now you know like okay now i know why i'm doing this now i yeah. know the importance it's, it's I, like know, I know the power scissors. behind it it's like yeah. taking scissors to that mm -hmm. connection in the spirit mm -hmm. realm right it's cutting right. those those uh -huh. those, those, ties. those are done or, or chain mm -hmm. you know what are you chain cutters mm -hmm. whatever those things are mm -hmm. you know it, it's breaking that out and you're saying uh-uh i ain't mm -hmm. hauling your garbage with me no more That's it's right. done and That's I'm right. putting you on notice. I right. have discovered you, mm -hmm. right? Because That's the right. enemy traffics in our life so much mm -hmm. and we don't recognize it's him. We right. think there's something wrong with us. Mm -hmm. He's so mm -hmm. crafty, mm -hmm. which we talk about in other sessions, mm -hmm. about making everything look like it's us when really right. he tempts and tempts and tempts and tempts and tempts mm -hmm. and then we fall and then he condemned, 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 mm -hmm. condemned, and condemned, right? Right. And so I think that renouncing is a, is a, um, important part that those that we minister to understand when we say okay now let's renounce this mm -hmm. so th we're getting serious now folks yeah, yeah. this is when we, we start telling um you know telling them to to hit the road mm -hmm. but i was so really loved those definitions that i i found mm -hmm. today about to disown disown mm -hmm. and to cast off and mm -hmm. you know to cut and to refuse to acknowledge they don't belong mm -hmm. to me i'm not i'm not That's acknowledging right. them. That's yeah. not mine. I'm not taking that. You know, that's like somebody trying to put something in your cart that doesn't belong to you. Yeah. You know, I use the store all the time. Yeah. Let's be, I'm hungry. I did have a nice dinner, but, um, you know, it's like, it's like, that's not mine. I'm not taking that. I'm not paying yeah. for that. I'm not that's hauling right. it with me. I'm not that's carrying out your groceries. I mean, yeah. you know, and we're not talking about, um, not being nice to people. <laughs> that's not what I'm saying, but you know what I mean? So, mm. yeah. So, um, again, um, just as a recap, we talked about repentance, we talked about um, forgiveness, and we talked about renouncing. So now mm -hmm. we're going to talk about, which is kind of a part, a sub part of renouncing, mm -hmm. is break agreement. That's another thing mm -hmm. that we do. Um, because we also, one of the things that a lot of ministries don't do that we do, is we talk about the lies that we believed out of our pain. Mm -hmm. And the lies that we believed out of our, uh, out of our, um, uh, circumstances. And so um, I was reading one day in Isaiah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn that right now. It's Isaiah 28. I'm going to read it to you because I was just, I was like jumping up and down. I was all excited because I, I found it myself. You know, it wasn't mm -hmm. something that somebody wrote in a book and then I went and read it and I was like, oh yeah, that's cool. I was reading through the book of Isaiah and I was in Isaiah 28. And uh, let's see here. I'll start along. Let's see. I'll start at 14. It says, therefore, hear the word of the Lord, you scoffers, you who rule this people in Jerusalem. Then it's 15. You boast, we have entered into a covenant with death. I'm reading mm -hmm. out of the NIV. And that is not funny, but it's like, yeah. oh my gosh, this is what we do. Yeah. With the realm of the dead, we have made an agreement. With an overwhelming scourge sweeps by, it cannot touch us. See, because we believe yeah. in our lies so much. Mm -hmm. But we think, okay, that's this. This fear is going to keep me safe. Mm -hmm. This is a fear is a perfect one mm -hmm. that, that for this mm -hmm. is that because we think fear will keep us safe, mm -hmm. or we we think in our lie, my lie that all men were jerks by keeping agreement with that lie. Mm -hmm. I thought it kept me safe. Mm -hmm. It didn't keep me safe. It didn't. It kept me from experiencing all that God had for me. Mm -hmm. And most of the the beliefs that we believe out of our woundings and our pain will keep us from something that God has for us. Right. So let me read on. It says, when an overwhelming scourge sweeps by, it cannot touch us. For we have made a lie our refuge mm. and a falsehood our hiding place. Wow. And so that's exactly, you know, what we do when we start talking about breaking agreement. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and, and, uh, since I've already said that one, we'll, we'll use that one because we use it a lot, is my um, ungodly belief, if you want to pick out one Patsy for your, your to be fairsies, um, <laughs> to be as vulnerable as I'm being, um, you know, my my um, godly, one godly belief was that all men were jerks. Well, it's, yeah, the, mm -hmm. the limiting belief was that all men were, were jerks. And so 
if I, and I lived my life according to that lie. Mm -hmm. So if I walked into a room and there was 500 men, not that I was out looking for men, but, mm -hmm. um, and four, there was, there was one jerk and 499 nice guys. I'm going to, my, my familiar spirit thing's going to drag me to um, sit next to or talk to or make conversation with this jerk. And it's going to reconfirm again um, this, you know, that all men are jerks. So I had to break agreement with that lie to see the truth because I was agreeing with the enemy because God doesn't see all men as jerks. Now, do I, now here's the, the honest truth. Are there men who's jerks? Yes, mm -hmm. there are. There are women that are jerks as well. Mm -hmm. But the problem with it was this all. Mm -hmm. And so God had to really begin to work with me. And I had to renounce that lie and break agreement with it. And God had to give me a new truth. And the new truth is, is that there are men, godly men who love and honor women. And that is true. And I am married to one, praise God. Mm -hmm. And I would not have never been able to unless I had a broke agreement with that lie because I would have never been able to find him or connect mm -hmm. with him because I'd have found something about him that he was a jerk. And I have to be mm -hmm. careful with that. So when something comes up in our marriage, I don't think, what a jerk. Not, Whoa, because that is a familiar mm -hmm. thing for me. Mm -hmm. I do not want to go there. Yeah. Right. And so I have to, no, 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 no. You're not coming yeah. back. I, yeah. you're not my stuff no more. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Like mm -hmm. what we just said, see here. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> New way. yeah, I got a light going on and off here in the back. Yeah. So what's, um, you have one Patsy you want to share? Well, primarily they're, they're a little bit, but that's okay. I can, <laughs> I can share about, um, just my always wanting to please people. And it stemmed from something deep inside me that I wasn't good enough. And so if I didn't try to please everybody, then they're going to reject me. And I couldn't handle the rejection. And so I had to try to be everything to all people and do everything and never say no and, and try to always appease people yeah. to try to keep the peace or to try to, to be that um, person that they wanted me to be. And in the process, you lose yourself, basically, yeah. and who you are, because mm -hmm. you never stand up for yourself, and you always just default to whatever they want, and you trying to please them. And inside, you get very frustrated and angry because... And you're exhausted. And you're exhausted <laughs> because you're trying so hard, and you can never please everybody. And, no. and finally, I came to the realization through ministry that my best is good enough. When I'm doing my best and when I'm pl and pleasing God is the most yeah. important thing I can do. Right. He's the only uh, opinion that matters, really. Mm -hmm. And so when I started to realize this and, and meditate on this and think about, wait a minute, I'm trying to please people. I'm never going to please everybody. That's I'm right. never going to please Jesus anybody. Jesus couldn't, couldn't yeah. please everybody. So exactly. We're, so we're currently not going to, right? And so it's not going to happen. And if they reject me, oh, well. My mm -hmm. Father God doesn't reject me. Jesus yeah. accepts me. And that's all that really matters. He's, he's the only one that really matters. And so if they reject me because I'm just doing the best I can or because I have an opinion or because, or because, you know, whatever, it's okay that I don't have to take it personally because I would take it very, very, very personally and it would wound me and hurt me and, and cause all this, the enemy to be able to just really yank me around all the time because then I would be so offended and and but I wouldn't admit it, no. you know. Oh no, it's fine. Everything's just no, fine. no, because you're so wonderful, wonderful right? Yeah, it's just like yeah, no, it's not a problem. <laughs> and inside, I'm going. Rah, 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 you know? And so, and it always comes out yeah. one way or another. Not, you yeah. know, when you least expect it, all of a yeah. sudden it comes out, and you're going, "Whoa, where'd that come from?" And somebody else will go, "Whoa, yeah. where'd that come from?" And so, accepting the fact that you're not perfect accepting the fact that only Jesus was perfect, accepting the fact that I, as, I'm, as long as I'm trying to do my best, then that's good enough. And so I think those kinds of things, that's where the enemy, though, takes you and takes you down a road, you know, with this of yeah. always beating you down. And as soon as you started to feel like, okay, um, you know, I'm okay or whatever, or, or it's okay if this person doesn't like me, it's okay. 
then the enemy was right on there trying to beat you down because he wanted to keep you entrapped in that lie that you have to please everybody. You have to make sure that, you know, everybody's happy around you. And it's not my job. I discovered it's not my job. It's not my job. Because I'm never going to, and everybody's never going to be happy all the time. Exactly. And so you had to renounce it and break Mm -hmm. agreement with that lie, right? Because that was a lie that I was believing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so the weight lifted and and I I guess that it's a struggle for you, you know, to go back to that. I remember one of mine had to do with conflict. And a lot Mm -hmm. of people have this, that Mm -hmm. they don't think conflict is godly. And that's right. And and, um, conflict produces Mm -hmm. change. It can be Mm -hmm. a godly thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we have lots of examples in which, uh, you know, Jesus confronted things and Mm -hmm. and things need to be spoken to. When we Mm -hmm. announce the kingdom, that's what we're doing is confronting Mm -hmm. the kingdom of darkness. So, as a recap, again, we uh, talk about uh, repentance in every step of ministry that we do. We talk about forgiveness in every step of ministry that we do. As we work through every stronghold, as we work through these limiting beliefs, as we work through woundings, um, as we work through generational influences, we do all of these things. We do the repentance, we do forgiveness, we renounce, and we figure out what it is you've made an agreement with the enemy, and we make sure that we break those agreements. And so then we have to replace those. Mm-hmm. And I think I think one thing that's really important to point out is when you break agreement with something, it's you are breaking that contract. And I know it was kind of hit on earlier in yep. a, about okay. breaking yep. that because you have a contract or a covenant with with that enemy mm-hmm. in that area. You've yep. made agreement. You've come into agreement. It's like signing a contract with them. And you've said in your heart, well, I'm going to agree with this. I'm going to believe this. And so you have to break that agreement that you have made because it is ungodly. And so you have to break that agreement with the enemy. And so you're not siding with him, you're siding with God. Exactly. And it's it, it, exactly that's what it's choosing. You're choosing, we're choosing mm-hmm. sides. Mm-hmm. I mean, very mm-hmm. simply, mm-hmm. you know, this is the kingdom of darkness. This is the kingdom mm-hmm. of light. You're saved or everybody who comes mm-hmm. to us is saved because we can't help anybody who's not saved unless they're mm-hmm. saved because, you know. But so um, we can't be halfway. So Mm -hmm. let's make the choice to move over here. But a lot of the things that that we see are not the obvious things. Mm -hmm. You know, all, I would say 90 to 95% of the Mm -hmm. clients that I have seen in in, in my history, and Patsy, you can Mm -hmm. can confirm how it works for you. I know it is when we work, that what people come to us for and what needs Mm -hmm. ministry is two Mm -hmm. different things. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, absolutely. Yep. What they leave with is so much mm-hmm. more than what they're mm-hmm. asking for, because right. God goes for the root mm-hmm. and he goes for the most important things. Yes. The other stuff, the fruit will change. Mm-hmm. People come in because of fruit, mm-hmm. but we go to the root and that's, right. you know, a nice little ditty, but that's really the truth. Mm-hmm. If you don't get the, the root, you'll mm-hmm. just be picking the fruit. And that's one right. of the things that I don't like about secular psychology Mm -hmm. is that they they pick fruit Mm -hmm. and they try to do behavior modification but it doesn't change the root and so Mm -hmm. someone is in therapy forever and they Mm -hmm. never get they Mm -hmm. never see any lasting change Mm -hmm. or consistently you know we talk about this so much in our with our new age friends um they can help somebody for a little while but then Mm -hmm. the person has to come back Mm -hmm. they just put a little band-aid on it and Mm -hmm. so we're looking for lasting, real change mm-hmm. because, um, in all honesty, uh, uh, the time is short and we right. don't have time to be messing right. around. Um, right. All is wa- walking around wounded, you know, mm-hmm. dead men walking, dead, me- dead women walking mm-hmm. around who are soulless, that are lifeless, that are joyless, that are, mm-hmm. you know, faith, faithless in, in, in the aspect. They don't have any faith. They don't have any hope. They don't have any joy. Mm-hmm. They have no ability to allow the Holy Spirit to flow through them because they're full of pain. Mm-hmm. And so our job is to help them become whole so that they can join the army and they can get in line and um, stand shoulder to shoulder along with us as we minister to other people. So again, with the, with the root, Mm -hmm. you have to think about a plant and if you cut the root out or dig the root out, it won't Mm -hmm. grow back because once you've severed the root, you've killed the plant 
and it can't grow back and it can't produce fruit any longer. Yeah, as long as you don't replant it. Sometimes. Right, exactly. <laughs> Some right. of us try to do that. Some of us do that, yeah. <laughs> yeah very true. So um, the other thing, the last thing that I wanted to talk about tonight um, specifically um, about our process is, um, I, actually there's two, I didn't put it on the list, but we. I was thinking about it, I thought, oh shoot, I've said it once and I, I, we didn't put it on there, is resisting. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible tells us resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. When we have gotten rid of all of the, the legal ground, right? It, mm -hmm. Back in Genesis, what is it? Four. Um, when the Lord said to, let's see, Cain killed Abel. Is that right? Cain. Mm -hmm. yes, he said, Cain you got to say, well, I don't think that's we're, right. We're studying that in first grade right now. Yeah, yeah. Cain <laughs> yes. killed Thank you. I always have to think, who killed who? Cain <laughs> killed Abel. So mm -hmm. the, God came to him and he said, be careful, sin is crouching at your door. Mm -hmm. and it's, you know, we use the analogy all the time when we talk about the demonic coming in as a doorway, and that's where that mm -hmm. comes from. But um, we have to remove, close up all those doors, right? We have to be careful that we know that the enemy is always lurking at our door, looking mm -hmm. for a way that he can get in. He can get in through so many ways. It was what we deal with in ministry, what woundings, what what generational, what thoughts, what, what beliefs, what, what, let's get these all tore apart. So the enemy has nothing to stand on. Right. And then he just has to go. Um, and we've really never had an issue when we get to the deliverance part, because we've dismantled everything by the time we get to it. So, but at that point, what we're saying is, uh, -uh I resist you. I'm mm -hmm. standing mm -hmm. firm and I'm telling you to go. That's right. And that's, um, not the last step, but the almost the last step mm -hmm. of what we do. So we talk about repentance, we do forgiveness, we um, renounce and break agreements, and then we resist, right? Mm -hmm. Pat, do mm -hmm. you have any um, stories about resisting? Well, just my one verse I have to remind myself all the time is submit yourself to God, mm -hmm. submit to God first, right. resist the devil, and he will flee. That's a promise. Yeah. That is a statement from God. If you submit to God, that sometimes we forget that part. Yes. We want to resist. We forget the for submitting to God part first. And but we, but we have to submit to God and resist, yeah. and know what it is you got to resist because the enemy knows your weaknesses. So you know what you need to exactly. resist. Exactly. You just don't do it. You don't feed that dog. So we've got so many stories about people feeding the I dog and then too. Yeah. I don't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? I don't know why. Why? <laughs> I know, and it's because you keep feeding it, yeah. and that dog's gonna grow. You know, what I mean? it. oh, I think I'll keep you. Yeah. Nice yeah. little oh, doggy. Yeah. 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 You're so fluffy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and, and that then the devil has to flee. The enemy has to flee if you right. resist, yeah. because because you, I mean, we've already all talked about. There's two ways to get rid of the demonic, and that's to either cast them out or starve them out. Mm -hmm. And you can starve it out by resisting. Yeah. You can yeah. resist and resist and resist. Yeah. And so once you recognize what's going on and you've renounced and broken and, and forgiven and repented and everything that you need to, you know, to do, then you resist. You stand right. strong, stand yeah. firm and resist. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I, I started giggling because... Mm -hmm. Patsy and I, we, you know, we specifically, and I'm not picking on anybody particular, but the one that thought that I thought of is, is the gentleman who came who had a, a seriously um, lust problem. Mm -hmm. And um, he didn't really, then he was like, and then I came to, came to ministry this morning and there was like five girls and he starts explaining what each one of them had on. I'm thinking, wow, you're just really resisting. <laughs> <laughs> right so then yeah so we had this i have this other story that my youngest daughter uh, i always say this but it's you know i just i'm not sure who, who knows and who doesn't know i have four four daughters and um my youngest daughter um just i have amazing daughters but my youngest daughter has always been the intercessor of the family when um, we were at home and if you really wanted an answer, you'd say, Anna, would you pray about this with me? And all my friends in ministry school would say, would you have Anna pray about this? And mm -hmm. I mean, it was remarkable. Mm -hmm. And so um, she told me and see, I had, I've alluded to already that I had horrible, horrible uh, problems with fear it came down. It was a generational thing. I mean, I 
to get hook, line, and sinker. Um, horrible, horrible, horrific nightmares. When I was growing up as a little girl, I slept in my younger brother's room because I was afraid to sleep alone at the end of his bed. And I called up in a little ball because I didn't want to be alone. My parents wouldn't let me sleep in their room. So uh, just horrible, horrible experiences with nightmares. But, you know, once I started taking authority over, I mean, even in my dreams, I was able to start learning to say, uh-uh, no, and to rebuke the enemy and take a stand. I mean, even at the beginning, I had to leave with, uh, sleep with my Bible open in my hand, I hand on my Bible. Uh, first, it started with it on my chest. Then I put it over the nightstand with my hand on it. Then, you know, you get so you wouldn't even wake up in the dreams and you're rebuking the enemy, right? Mm -hmm. And so when it would come, begin to come, you know, at me and the panic attacks and all that, I was learning to, to stand in that. So then I have these beautiful four daughters, right? And my youngest daughter, of course, they, they, you know, I don't think they think I'm crazy, but they know that, well, you know, they'll hear people saying, mom, I know what she's got. She's got some sort of a generational, you know, they just lived around me and lived around the ministry for so long. They'll say, oh, mom, I can't believe people don't know about this stuff. You know, they just think it's normal. And so my youngest, um, she gets up one morning. I don't know. She was probably eight or nine. Maybe she wasn't that long. Maybe she was that old. I mean, and she told me, she said, I had a dream this morning or a dream last night. I said, you did. And she said, yep. And I said, what's your dream about? And she said, um, there was demons in my room. And I said, there were, you know, trying very hard with your mm -hmm. face, not to be, you know, <gasps> you, know I was, you know, you know, go after warfare and get, you know, my little hand out and go after it and try not to be too much shock. But I'm thinking, Oh no, you're not working in my house, mm -hmm. and, you know, going after it and trying to just, you know, just be calm, breathe here. And um, I said to her, they did. And I, she said, yeah. And she was just like going along in the morning. I said, so what'd you do? And I said, she said, I told them to go. And I'm like, what are you, <laughs> stupid? <laughs> I told them to go. And I said, what happened? She said, they went. <laughs> Out of the mouths and, of babes exactly. and the faith of babes. Yes, I mean, the faith of children. Could, exactly. They just believe it. Yeah. Exactly. That's where we need to be. We just say, go, go. just yeah. get out. And they you have know? to go. Yeah. I was like, well, yeah. you, went, you know, yeah. and that's where we have to live is in that resistance. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh no, this doesn't have to be a mm -hmm. big war. You have no right here. That's right. Get out. Mm -hmm. And um, so again, I had beaten a, a, a big stick today. So we deal with every ministry session that we go through, we deal with the repentance portion. We deal with the forgiveness. And there's so many people that you have to forgive. We won't even go into that tonight, but I'm telling you, there's so much into the mm -hmm. into both those steps. So in there, everybody say, okay, all right, I'm, I'm a Christian. I've, I've forgiven everybody. God's forgiven me. Okay, what's next? No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. We're going to go through this. Okay, so we repent. We've forgiven. We're now going to renounce. What are those things? Mm -hmm. God, show us what those things are that you're that they have believed and made agreements with. What is it mm -hmm. that they've broke that they, they need to have broken? What generational thing that's traveled through their fine mm -hmm. their line? Do they need to say, You ain't mine no more? Mm -hmm. Hit the road, Jack. Mm -hmm. um, I'm breaking agreement with you. They're mm -hmm. you're not my possession anymore. Mm -hmm. And we deal with that. And then we move into resistance. A resist, right? Is that where I'm at, Patsy? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Resist. Sometimes you get going and you're like, where am I? I'm lost. Um, and so we resist. We tell him to get out. He left. He's got to leave. So we know the scripture. I should have looked this up, Patsy, and I didn't. But there's a scripture that talks about when um, demonic entities leave a home. Mm -hmm. They leave and they go around and they get mm -hmm. some people and they think, I'm looking for a host home. Because there are entities looking for a place. They always want a body. Mm -hmm. You know, makes you kind of wonder what that's about, but they always want a body to use. Um, and so something to influence, I think, has something to do with our words because mm -hmm. our words have so much power. And our actions, too, but our words, we don't realize the power of our words. And so they want to influence you and they want to get a hold of you. And so they bring back, the scripture says that they go and they, they can't find no place to rest. Mm -hmm. So they go and they bring, what is it, six or seven more back with them. Mm -hmm can't remember six yeah. or seven more back with them more evil than they are so mm -hmm. apparently there are there are levels right. of evilness mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and so they come back and they see that the house has been slept, has been swept clean mm -hmm. right so now we have just resisted the enemy mm -hmm. told him to go and our house is clean mm -hmm. we would be doing people a disservice 
if we did not ask God to come in, ask Holy Spirit to fill that Amen. place up. Yes. And so that is the last step of what we mm -hmm. do when we minister to people is now we want that house full mm -hmm. with godly beliefs. Yes. With the beliefs the that, truth. that mm -hmm. the truth that, mm -hmm. that aligns with who he is, who his mm -hmm. nature is, his character mm -hmm. and his word. That's right. We, we want to have that instilled with them. We want them to live under blessing, mm -hmm. right? If they need them. Mm -hmm father's blessing if they need a mother's blessing if they need mm -hmm. word curses broken off mm -hmm. if they need vows and judgments broke mm -hmm. if they need to have a revelation of the father if they need whatever they need mm -hmm. and we need to replace the evil with good mm -hmm. and and that's how we end up our ministry mm -hmm. so those of you who work with people in deliverance inner healing whatever make sure that when the house is been swept clean that you get it filled up, get them filled yes. with the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. get them connected with someone, a, a discipleship program, get them connected, yes. get them, get, do a follow up. You know, that's one of mm -hmm. the things that Patsy and I have talked about, about the ministry that we do. It has a, 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 a somewhat of a series of a, a follow up, but mm -hmm. it's not good. And so we've added more to ours because right. we want to make sure that there's fruit, lasting mm -hmm. fruits. 30 days, six months, one year, mm -hmm. five years. So we built Absolutely, that relationship yes. with the people that they're still walking in freedom mm -hmm. and that they have the tools that they need mm -hmm. to stay where they are and now to help other people. Right. Right, Patsy? Mm -hmm. Amen. You want anything to add to that? No, I just, uh, basically, I agree 100%. You have to fill. And yeah. and, and a lot of people leave that step off. Mm -hmm. you, they they you know, oh, well, now you're delivered, you're, you know, just go ahead and resist and everything. But yeah, then the enemy comes back and takes the legs out from under them because they weren't prepared for, um, for that. Cause they thought, oh, I'm free. Yeah. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm good. I'm good to go. Yeah. But the filling of and replacing, um, the lie for the truth is so right. important to, to cause yeah. you're making a trade off. You're trading yeah. off that lie for yeah. the truth and filling right. yourself with the truth. Right. And the blessing or whatever blessing it is it needs exactly. to because you've been lived under a curse. And so now you need to fill it with a blessing, what God's blessing is. You know, when I went through uh, the deliverance session that I went through or sessions that I went through mm -hmm. in Michigan before I even came to Florida and went to Brownsville and got involved in deliverance and all that, I didn't understand what happened to me. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand what they were doing. Mm -hmm. I was so clueless. Mm -hmm. They didn't really give me any scripture so that I could go home and read it. Mm -hmm. I just felt it was like, woo, woo, you know, mm -hmm. woo, woo, but I mm -hmm. knew that it was in the scriptures, but I still mm -hmm. didn't, you know, and they told me, um, they gave me some, um, uh, word, uh, visions that they had, which, which was really powerful for me, um, that God actually really gave me again when I went through some ministry quite a few years later, he kind of like took that and then. Mm. You know, made it really wow. big and was, was very personal. Mm. But, um, oh my, I lost my train of thought. Oh, just that um, I didn't know what was going on. Mm -hmm. And so for those who are in either um, one of our schools, Freedom School, or, you know, whether they go on with us in our prayer schools and our mentoring and discipleship schools, or whether they're in Start Fresh or any program or, or watching on Lunch and Learn, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, or they just happen to come across us on YouTube or in, on, on Facebook or whatever. We want you to know that it's great to get clean. Mm -hmm. It's great to be whole, mm -hmm. but you have to have more than being clean and being whole to walk it out. Mm -hmm. you have to have that truth rooted mm -hmm. in you mm -hmm. which doesn't come in a one or a two time session right. you really need that in order to be able to experience it and you need you need the word of god mm -hmm. in you and you need a prayer life and you need the holy ghost right mm -hmm. and you need the spiritual gifts and come on now that's what i mm -hmm. like let's start flowing in the holy ghost right, right? let's start let's start start mm -hmm. telling and telling of the world what jesus wants to do mm -hmm. and so i'm excited patsy are you excited about too. what yeah. we do i love yeah. what we yeah. do we love what we do we love to see people set free Amen. We love the Amen. light bulb I know. Comes on. and they're like wow you know i have a personal um uh, uh, young woman um, that uh, Pansy and I did some ministry with and I personally kind of mentor somewhat and stay mm -hmm. very much in contact with her and 
you know, she just says to me, uh, the last time I saw her, she said, my friends are noticing. Yeah. You're different. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that is such an honor mm -hmm. when you know inside mm -hmm. you're changing or you mm -hmm. feel like you're changing. But when other people start, mm -hmm. start yeah. noticing. And I was yeah. like, oh, I'm so excited. And she goes, yeah, right? And she goes, and they're asking me who I'm seeing. Can I give them your name? And I'm like, I'm sure. They do know that I preach from the Bible, right? And everything is from the Bible. And like, yeah, I told them. And I also told them that if you don't want to change, don't bother going because she ain't going to come with you unless you want to change. But, you know, it's so wonderful. I, I remember when someone said that to me because I um, moved from Michigan to Florida when I was like 38 years old. So I had a long history in this small little town. If you ever grew up in a small town, everybody knows everybody and everybody knows everybody's business mm -hmm. and whose business it was your mama and your daddy and your uncle and your aunt and who you was and where you lived, and where you used to live and who used to live there before you, right? That's the mm -hmm. small town America. And so um, you have a perception of who you are mm -hmm. and it's hard for them to move out of this perception of who you are. So I move away and I go to ministry school to pursue the call that God put on my life when I was 17. And um, people from my hometown start moving to Pensacola, of course, we know, because Brownsville Revival is coming on, right? And I had this woman, she says to me, it's almost like you're not the same person. <laughs> you're so totally different than who you were. And I was like, thank you. I mean, she was just like, I'm so confused. And I was <laughs> just so blessed by that. <laughs> I knew I was so ugly, not in the physical, you know, I'm not talking about that. Mm -hmm. I was so ugly on the inside, not because God made me ugly, but because mm -hmm. of the circumstances and the mm -hmm. hatred and the self-hatred mm -hmm. and the shame and the unforgiveness and the judgments and oh my, and attitudes and it, just go on and on mm -hmm. and all the pain of being, you know, abused and neglected. Mm -hmm. So to be said that, wow, I, if I didn't know that this, was you i wouldn't know this was you what a great testimony mm -hmm. tell my own testimony a great testimony to be able to have other people recognize your rebirth your mm -hmm. change your growth your transformation your mm -hmm. right yeah. and so it, it it's really cool so mm -hmm. we just want to bless everyone tonight mm -hmm. and um pat you got anything else that you want to like we're running up here on about, about yep. an hour Yep. Um, okay. We just want to bless you tonight. Patsy, you want to pray or you want me to pray or what do you want to do? Go ahead, Cynthia. Okay, Let's so pray. Father, tonight we just thank you yes. so much for thank you, Lord. the word that's gone forth. Father, we mm -hmm. thank you for the yes. tools that you give us. Yes, thank Lord. you for all the tools that we didn't talk about. Mm -hmm. Most of our tools you, tonight Jesus. that you've given us, Father, mm -hmm. but you've given us this framework, Lord, of repentance. God, yes. we thank you that we can repent before you. And mm -hmm. I pray for anyone out there that needs to repent and has been frightened by what will God yes. do? What will God say? Yes. Father, yes. I ask you to send Holy Spirit and that you would comfort them and that you would reassure them to know that you are there mm -hmm. and that you are the God who comforts. Comfort. Yes. And Father, for those who need to forgive, Father, mm -hmm. may the word yes. go forth that it's not mm -hmm. about it's okay. It's not mm -hmm. about they'll not be punished. It's about right. removing ourselves as judge. And Father, Amen. I just pray Amen. for those who've been treated in such a way that they're mm -hmm. in deep unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. And I pray for those who are mm -hmm. holding themselves in deep unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. God, I yes, ask that Lord. you give them the revelation that yes, they are Lord. loved. Amen. Just the way they are in their yes, whole mass yes. that he mm -hmm. loves you and he has a plan for you. Amen. And so, Father, we pray over those who, who need to renounce and break agreement. Father, mm -hmm. they don't even know. They're just so lost. Mm -hmm. And so, God, mm -hmm. I ask you to begin to show them. Holy Spirit, yes, when they feel something or they see something and, mm -hmm. and they, they someone says something or they have seen the word or someone speaks the word and their little heart mm -hmm. goes, sure. and Lord, mm -hmm. I ask that you, Holy Spirit, you'd shine a light on that. They would yes, know, Lord. oh, I got a problem yes, there Lord. that I need to have dealt with. Mm -hmm. Lord, I just ask that you'd minister to them. Yes, and Father, I pray for those who are, have done all that they can they can do, mm -hmm. Lord, and they've done mm -hmm. it all and they just need to stand. And mm -hmm. so, Father, I pray over them that you bless them, yes, you Lord. send your angels to set charge about them, God. We Amen. set our head to protect them about them, that you would yes, set your Lord. angels, that there would be breakthrough mm -hmm. yes. in the third heaven, that they yes, would receive Lord. their answers, Father. We Amen. just bless them. Thank you, and Jesus. And Father, we pray. 
wholeness. We pray mm -hmm. for freedom. Mm -hmm. We pray deliverance. We yes. pray inner healing. God, mm -hmm. we pray revelation. We yes. pray alignment Amen. with your word, your nature, your character, and mm -hmm. your ways, Father God. Amen. Lord, even as we this week Amen. in Freedom School begin to go into who you are, Father, mm -hmm. I ask those who are in that school, they would get a true mm -hmm. picture of who you are. Maybe Amen. they know who you are, but God, expand that view, mm -hmm. we pray. Yes, Lord. And so, Father, yes, we bless those who listen tonight mm -hmm. and those who will listen in the future. Amen. Because, Father, Amen. we know that your word doesn't return void. That's and your right. word doesn't Amen. have a date on it because, Lord, That's you're right. outside of time. That's right. You're outside That's of time. Right. You're outside of a year. You're outside of a location. Mm -hmm. So, Father, we just send forth your word yes, and we Lord. ask yes, for Lord. freedom to occur. Mm -hmm. And we bless yes, the people who are listening mm -hmm. uh, by live or by replay. Mm -hmm. And, Father, mm -hmm. I specifically uh, pray for our sister who's been uh, mm -hmm. patiently listening. Yes, and God, yes, she's Lord. been she's been listening. And, God, uh -huh. she's been so yes, attentive Lord. through this whole yes, thing. Lord, thank you, Lord, Lord. she's been so attentive through the other courses thank she you, went Jesus. before. And, God, bless you're using Lord. her bless mightily in deliverance. And, God, bless we ask you just fill up her toolbox. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord, sorry. we ask that you take some of those tools and mm -hmm. maybe have it need mm -hmm. to be resharpened. God, that you'd resharpen mm -hmm. those. Yes, Lord. And I just speak over her that, that yes. many will be set free from her yes, Lord. Uh, through her ministry and through yes, the Lord. ministry of her husband. God, yes, we Lord. ask that you would take more tools mm -hmm. that maybe she doesn't know about or she mm -hmm. wasn't familiar with. That you, God, you'd pull them off mm -hmm. your shelf out of the tool house in, yes, in Lord. heaven, Lord, yes, if there Lord. is such a thing. That yes, you'd pull them off your word yes, branch Lord. and you'd send them down and put mm -hmm. them in her toolbox. Yes, Lord. So that, Lord, she can in mm -hmm. turn go out and make disciples yes. and set yes, people free Lord. and yes, do as Lord. you have done, Lord God, that you would yes, announce Lord. the yes, kingdom. And yes. that you are Hallelujah. here to heal and sail and come for those who are yes, sick Lord. and those who need a doctor. Lord, Amen. may she have the words of life and the words mm -hmm. of the, the heavenly doctor. Mm -hmm. You know, there's pres prescription, the mm -hmm. word prescription mm -hmm. of the heavenly doctor. Amen. Father, we just bless her tonight. And I bless yes, you tonight. And you know yes. who you are listening. Mm -hmm. And Father, we love you tonight. And we yes, bless Lord. you. And Lord, I bless my, my friend, Patsy. No, and thank I ask you, you to go with her today thank and you, tomorrow. Yes, and throughout Lord, this you. week, as we look forward to what yes. we're going to do this week, mm -hmm. we're looking forward thank to it. You, Jesus. And Father, we love you and we bless you. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Jesus Amen. Name. Amen. All right. Every, those of you who have been city, staying with us patiently and watching us live, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. We bless you. Yes. We'll see you next week on Tuesday mm -hmm. Talk. Mm -hmm. Those of you who are in Freedom School, let's wait tonight. Thursday will be our, mm -hmm. our uh, new lesson going out. Those mm -hmm. of you who are in Start Fresh. Hang in there. Send us an email. We'd be happy to pray for you or answer any questions. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. All right.